guys, this is history. What you've done, what you've done. You guys should go a platform that influence. Yeah, of us. It's the world's most dangerous morning show. Wake the fuck up, breakfast club. DJ Envy. Envy playing my record, I made it. Jess Hilarious. Jess be with <laughs> She don't spare nobody. Charlemagne the God. What made you think the liking of controversial questions would take his part? I like this show. Thanks, breakfast club. Good morning, USA! Yo, 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 y
House Republicans grilled Dr. Fauci on his response to the COVID pandemic and accused him of trying to cover up links to China because he helped fund experiments at the infamous Wuhan lab. Let's hear from Fauci. No, it wasn't I'm, you. It wasn't what you were funding. What I'm saying is that I cannot account, nor can anyone account, for other things that might be going on in China. So Republicans say that the six feet apart social distancing recommendation by federal health, health officials was arbitrary and not based on science. Fauci insisted that the six foot guidance did not come from him, but the CDC, and he just merely repeated it. Now, Georgia Republican Marjorie Taylor Greene slammed Fauci for his guidance during the COVID-19 pandemic. Let's hear from her. Children all over America were forced to wear masks. Healthy children forced to wear masks, muzzled in their schools. And then they were forced to learn from home because of your so-called science and your medical suggestions. But this was nothing we've seen before. So how would somebody be prepared for something they've never seen before? But not muzzled, yo. <laughs> it's so dramatic. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, dramatic. I, I agree, Envy. So, yeah, there is. There's so, there, but she was right. There was no science behind it, mm. um, which basically meant that there were no clinical trials to back up the fact that six feet will actually work mask will actually work things of that nature so Fauci did say that public health officials will take a closer look at the cost benefit ratio of things like vaccine mandates and you know those type of guidances um, but Republicans are looking for um, are suggesting that Fauci uh, attempted to evade public records laws and they're demanding he turn over private emails and phone records it's just kind of getting out of hand well yeah. let the record show uh, down south ed- elders and Caribbean elders had better remedies and ideas to stay healthy than they did. I could have made that up. Stay with, hey, somebody's sick. Stay, stay away from them. them. <laughs> Get as far away from them as you can. All right? right. If not as far away as you can, then six feet. But th- all but, right. But didn't their leader cover your mouth when you cough, or, but instead of your hand, use a mask. But yeah. didn't the Republicans' leader say Clorox? Might, Clorox may work. Didn't he say that one time? Oh come on now, shut up. Well, but he yeah, did say that. But they, but they going at Fauci. But man, knock it off. Doctor Doctor Fauci is the actual doctor. You should have right. been listening to Trump anyway. Trump, what are you talking about? Trump is just the president. Because they're arguing with Dr. Fauci saying all the things that he did that was wrong, but their leader actually told people to take Clorox. Dr. Fauci is the actual doctor that people were supposed to be listening to, him and the CDC. It has nothing to do with... You should have been listening to Trump. Trump should have been listening to them. Actually. Mm -hmm. Actually. That's what he should have been doing. And remember when folks used to get in trouble for saying... uh, COVID came out of a lab in China? Yes. Remember when that used to be a controversial thing to say? You get canceled. Remember that? Yes. I hate it here. I really do. Mm. Well, speaking of former President Trump, he will likely not have his election interference trial before the 2024 election. A Georgia appeals court is scheduling oral arguments in Trump's case to have Fulton County District Attorney Fonnie Willis removed as the prosecutor. A notice sent uh, to defense counsel shows the date is tentatively set for October 4th. Um, a judge said her affair with former special prosecutor in the case was inappropriate and allowed for the appeal to proceed. So that one is a, a point for Trump in, in, in that regard. And uh, new research shows that fathers are more at risk for issues later in life than men without children. Oh, y'all hmm. dads, right? Research found that later um, found later that heart issues, excuse me, were particularly noticeable in men who became dads at 25 years of age or younger. The causes aren't really spelled out, but researchers suggest that the stress of parenthood could make it more difficult for men to maintain a healthy diet and healthy lifestyle and, and continue with exercise and things of that nature. The study is published in the AJPM Focused. I didn't become a dad until I'm 29, so I'm good. Uh, I had my, my first one at 22, 23. Nope. Yeah, I'm in trouble. I didn't have my first baby until she, she was, I was 29 years old. Yeah, I had my first at 23. She'll be 16 this month. Mm. All right. Well, that is front page news. Thank you, Morgan. Thank you. I'll see you next hour. Yeah. All right. Everybody else, get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. If you need to vent, phone lines are wide open. Again, 800-585-1051. Get it off your chest. Call us up right now. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. This is your time to get it off your chest. Keep calling. 800-585-1051. We want to hear from you on The Breakfast Club. Hello, who's this? What's good? This is Don out of 252 North Carolina coming up here trying to get at y'all. What's good, DJ? What's good, Charlamagne the guy? What's good? It's the best. Good morning. Good morning, brother. How you Kane. feeling? Yeah, man. Hey, I'm calling, man, because I'm going to work seven days a week, man. Tired of that, man. 
getting paid chump change, man, and he finally making mad money. I'm talking about billion dollar money, man. What's up with the corporations, man? Y'all talk, they ain't able to pay $15. Minimum pay $25 an hour, man. Yeah, I do agree that the federal minimum wage should be raised. Where you at? Do you work seven days a week? Man, I'm at a company called out of work. I mean, I'm at a low in a right now. This job, man. Your phone, your phone going in and out, brother. Damn, man, we gotta get your minimum wage up so you can get better phone service, man. But but thank you for yeah, calling, man. brother. All right. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> <laughs> I, I get the gist of it though. He's upset yeah. that he got to work seven days a week. Yeah. He's overworked and underpaid, like so many Americans. Seven days a week. Hello, who's this? Here. Yeah. What's up, Trav? Hey, Trav. Hi, right, Jasper, Jasper, Jasper. What's up, Sean? Peace, sis. What's happening? You know, I'm just calling in to say, y'all know what y'all know what money it is. Y'all know what money Happy it is. Happy Pride, it's pride. Yes, Mom. Okay. <laughs> I'm stepping out here, Star. This is our month, baby. And I just want to call in. I just want to say. Y'all want me to be gay so bad. You are. You know, but you know what's so crazy? I'm actually calling in as a highlight. It's just, I love what you're doing. By highlighting one gay, one gay a day. Thank and you big so sexy, much. Shout out to you, baby. Yes. And I yes. just want to highlight one of the gayest I know and tell him happy Pride Month. Sean Stone, for the party guy, happy Pride Month. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the gayest <laughs> I know. What's wrong with Sean you? Sean ain't doing nothing but minding his business oh down in Florida God. with his and family. And being gay this month. Minding his business and being gay this man, month. That man, got, a, it, that man got a whole family. His girl <laughs> might be listening like, what? Sean Stone, come hey, on. Hey, <laughs> hey. Hey, Sean. There's a lot of men out there with families listening this morning. Oh, that. my goodness. Oh, Sean on the phone. Oh, Sean. Why is he on my phone call? Come on, Sean. No, no, no. It's Black Music Month. It's Black Music Month. It was signed by Jimmy Carter in 1979, Trav. Why can't, Girl. It, why can't it be Black Gay Music Month? <laughs> no, it's Black, black Music Month. Gay Blacks and Music what? Month. Yo, Jess, I don't understand. Why is Trav on my call? <laughs> He's on top of you. <laughs> He's on top of you, uh, Sean. No, man, I'm, I'm on top. It's Pride Month. Sean, no. you at the bottom Trav. of the call. <laughs> Trav, you will never be on top of Sean Stone, okay? Yeah. I only get on top of women. All right, Trav. I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna leave you to your phone call now. Y'all have a good day. Y'all have a good one. Happy Pride Month, everybody, especially you, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> Trav, Trav, you be cushioning. This is funny. I Trav be cushioning on Sean Stone. <laughs> Yo, what up, Sean Stone? I hung up on him. What's up, Sean Stone? <laughs> Happy Pride Listen, Month, Sean. Oh, don't do that to him, man. What's... No, I want. <laughs> Show the man. What's wrong with you, bro? Happy Black Music Month. Happy Black Music Happy Month, too. Black music month. Let me yeah. see what other months we got. This Yo, month. it's Men's Mental Health Yo, Awareness listen. Month. It's like Men's Sean? Mental Health Awareness Month. It is. Yo, yeah. listen. I, I want to say happy birthday to my son. He turned uh, 10 years old on May 30th. Okay. I actually fly up from Florida. I'm in New Jersey right now. You know what I mean? Nice. And I had to come up and, you know, celebrate his birthday with him and let him meet his uh, baby sister. Oh. And he's a great big brother. Oh. Chase, I love you. But also, hey, Jess. What's up? I'll be seeing your, your clip online with uh, Big Mac. Yeah. Tell him, to, tell him to stop showing his stomach. Good. We love to see your stomach. I know, right? Thank you. I'll be telling him. Yeah. Like, Yo, I... Yo, that's crazy. Jess, how you have abs and you pregnant? <laughs> I, it's my workout regimen before <laughs> Yo, that, and after I had this dope, baby. Dope. But also, I wanted to compliment you guys on the Michael Rainey interview yesterday, right? Yeah. yeah. But did you guys know that Sean Stone was supposed to be on power? No, I didn't no, know nobody that. knew that except for Sean Stone. <laughs> I actually just there was a promotion on the radio called Power Casting Call, okay. and I actually signed up for it. And they send me my package in my email from G-Unit Studio. I was supposed to play either two characters, mm -hmm. Folk Santana or Ashwa Brett Thompson. And what happened? Man, mm -hmm. you a lie. They just wanted, you, they just no, wanted you to stay no, in the night. No, 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 Charlamagne. Charlamagne, I have the receipt yeah. to show that I'm not lying. They actually, uh, somebody named Joshua uh, Brent actually stole $349 from me, brother. You got got like that. Okay. You got got with one of them stupid ass schemes, Sean. But before I go, Charlamagne, I know you love writers, and I want to shout out Ryan Dust. That's R A Y O N D U S T. Ryan Dust. He's a great writer from Jamaica, but he lives in Paris at this moment. Y'all go okay. check out his poetry.
All right, brother. All right, okay. Have a good one. Thank, Thank you. you. Get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. If you need to vent, hit us up right now. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Charlemagne, Gansy, what up? Are we live? This is your time to get it off your chest. I got an indoor pool, an outdoor pool. We want to hear from you on The Breakfast Club. We can get on the phone right now and tell you what it is. We live? Hello, who's this? Yo, it's me, Jeremy. Get it off your chest. Yeah, like, uh, you know, just hearing all this hip-hop stuff. I just seen that Drake just dropped a new drink. I'm like, you know, Kendrick just got to help out the culture, man. Just got to really help out the culture. You got to do something because this is ridiculous. Right now. You said Kendra gotta help out the culture? Yes, man, yes. This man just gave you oh, four it, records last it, month. It, 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 it hasn't huh? it hasn't been a month since the Drake Kendrick battle. Kendrick just gave y'all four yeah. records last month. Not like us is one of the top records in the country. I know, I know Bless God is that, but like, dude, it's just I don't know. I don't know. I mean, congratulations on the book, you know. I hope everybody don't have to see the child or feed the kid or their son. You know what I mean? You so if you don't have the what? What? You know, beat his son. Envy can't beat his son. Logan will beat the hell out of Envy. What are you talking about? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Charlie, man, come on. I thought you were an idiot. Really an idiot. Come on. Oh, 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 my fault. Oh, my God. Oh, my goodness. That's right. I hope you don't have to feed your son either. Congratulations on your fucking gun. I want to say congratulations on the fucking gun. Thank you, sir. You're copying a philosopher. That's right. Get out of the die line is available right now. What are you talking about? Feed your son. It's a, it's an inside joke. Okay, I'll tell y'all, right? Okay. Mm-hmm. Basically, if you stink, right, you don't say somebody stink. You be like, damn, you know, uh, your son must be hungry. Because when somebody says they're going to feed their son, that means they're going to wash up. Like, they need to go wash up. So I need to go home and feed my son. <laughs> that means they need to go hey, wash yeah. up. The country issues he talking about. It ain't know. country. Something it's an that. inside joke. Uh, him and that white boy be coming up with like, <laughs> Lil No, it actually came from uh, Lil Taylor Gang and they are producer. <laughs> hey, we'll explain. Uh, we'll explain later this week. All right. <laughs> well, get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. If you need the event, you can hit us up now. We got uh, Just With The Mess coming up. Yes. Young Miami speaks on uh, City Girls possibly separating. Wow. Okay, we'll get to that next with Jess with the Mess. And then after Jess with the Mess, we got a huge announcement, a call show announcement. So don't move. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Jess Hilarious, Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Good morning. And listen, man, uh, thank you to everybody who's been going out to get my third book, Get Honest or Die Lying. I want to tell y'all that tonight I will be at the Ark with Books for Sale by Mahogany Books in Washington, D.C. Uh, with my good sister Angela Rye. We'll be there at 7 p.m. having a discussion about my new book, Get Honest or Die Lying. Um, so it's the Ark with, with Books for Sale by Mahogany Books tonight at 7 p.m. in D.C. So go to WhySmallTalkSucks.com to get those tickets. That's right. And let's get to Just With The Mess. News is real, brothers. Just Jessica Robin Moore. Just don't do no lies. Don't do no lies. She don't spare nobody. 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 Worldwide Jess. Worldwide Mess. On The Breakfast Club. She's a culture shift. She was able to get y'all to see something and understand something that nobody could get you to see. It's time to set it off. So, Young Miami speaks on city girls going their separate ways. She sat down with uh, Complex, and she spoke on why her and JT decided, you know, to not really call it quits, but do things on their own. I think when the City Girls album just dropped and it didn't do too well and we was just like trying to do our press run, you know the whole rollout of the album was just so bad because we was just in two different spaces. Mm. You know, like we older now and it was just like she was doing her own thing. She on the West Coast, mm-hmm. I'm in Miami, I'm doing my own thing and I felt like naturally when, when she doing her own thing, it just worked for her. Mm-hmm. And when I'm doing my own thing, it worked for me. But when we get together as a group, it just wasn't connecting. Mm-hmm. Like it just wasn't working no more. So I think we both was at a point where we was just like we probably should just do our own shit. yeah so there was always speculation that the city girls were like done with mm-hmm. the actual group but it was no real confirmation it seemed like um, the opposite though it seemed like when they come together the, the records are bigger I, mm-hmm. I would I think yeah I feel like it's a disconnect between between who, them personally I don't know if it's between them personally but more so their team Mm. Or the label or somebody. Mm -hmm. Because they always deliver, to me anyway, with the music. music. But then there's something that doesn't connect them. I think it's the other way around. I think it's them personally. Mm -hmm. I feel like they 
don't connect or they been stopped like being in sync with each other and in business like mm -hmm. they like the music they thrive through their music together what are you doing <laughs> no, I was but, thinking about that choreography because you said they not together but I was like man I remember they used to be on stage and they, yeah, like they be doing that yeah. little dance where they go to yeah. side to side so that's what I think they're looking I think, to me <laughs> right in music <laughs> like when they are the city girls in man. business like I think they make more sense together oh, they're bigger together in music but like personally it's probably yeah. like uh, no but even the Usher record no, the Usher record was dope I don't think it caught on like it was supposed to I thought that was a dope record they had a lot of dope records on their album and no, I just don't think connected no just mm -hmm. right because JT is like to focus on just the music JT yeah. likes to rap yep. but then you know Young Miami wants to do the, all the other stuff the mm -hmm. podcast and the mm -hmm. TV show mm -hmm. and everything else that ain't really JT thing yeah yes yep. I agree with I, yeah. I got to see what you're saying and they make that very clear they just show that you know without even saying that um, is our TV show still coming Young Miami um, I'm not sure. She listens every morning. Salute to yeah, Young she Miami. Does. Mm -hmm. Salute yes. her. Love her. Is the TV show still coming, Young Miami? Let the people know. <laughs> Gotta let us know, girl. Yes. She listens to us on uh, 105.3 to beat. Yep, in Miami. In, in Miami. Miami. Mm -hmm. yes. Shout out. But yeah. No, 103.5 to beat. Yes, 103.5 to beat. Yeah, yeah, Miami. But I'm happy that she uh, could be transparent to, you know, because that's always been a question. And then the fans make it so much bigger. They mm -hmm. amplify it, you know, because still have City Girls fans. And mm -hmm. then we got Young Miami fans and JT fans. So I'm glad that she uh, shed some type of light on it. Kanye is being sued by former assistant. So Kanye West's former executive slash personal assistant, Lauren Pisciata, is suing him for sexual harassment. Um, according to our lawsuit, Kanye hired her in July of 2021 after meeting her when she was uh, when he was putting together his fashion line. She claims that she was a successful OnlyFans model making one million dollars a year. But after but a year after joining Kanye's team, he allegedly approached her saying that he wants her to be more godlike and that he would pay her <laughs> a million a year if she quit OnlyFans. So she agreed. She claims that shortly after that, Kanye started to send her inappropriate text messages. The messages are described to be very vulgar and use explicit language. One, I'm just going to read one of them. Um, it said, is my wiener racist? What? It is. This effing racist wiener of mine. I'm going to beat this effing racist wiener for being effing racist i'm gonna <laughs> stare at pictures of real. white women with black asses and beat the s out of my racist wiener um she also jesus she also claims that he would masturbate during their phone conversations oh, and would God. ask if she could hear or guess what he was doing well it'd be masturbate massa masturbate masturbate okay yes put on punk he was also reportedly <laughs> obsessed with the penis size of all her boyfriends. Whoa. Um, yeah. The lawsuit says Happy that Pride. she <laughs> she received several sexual photos and videos of Kanye. She claimed he later promoted her to chief of staff with a four million dollar a year salary. Jesus. But she was fired in October 2022. Uh, she claimed Kanye offered her a $3 million severance package, but never paid it. So she's suing for breach of contracts, or sexual harassment, wrongful termination, and hostile work environment. Dang. First of all, there was a lot there. You t a he, lot. He told the woman to get off OnlyFans, allegedly, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to be more godlike, God -like. and he would pay her. Yeah, that's like back in the day. You go in the strip club and say you don't have to do this. You ain't got to do this anymore. You. you ain't yeah. got to do this. I got you. Uh huh. And he said his penis is his penis he's racist. Racist, and he's gonna beat his penis. Racist penis. Penis. That's what he said. He's gonna beat it while we're always looking gonna at punish it for being racist. Correct. Punish it for being racist while they're on the phone. Yes. No, that was a text. Oh. And they, during their phone conversations, he would masturbate and ask her if she could guess, like, guess what I'm doing. Uh, <laughs> like, if he guess could. what race my penis is. <laughs> right, right. Jesus. That sounds like a terrible ball he would yeah. try to put in a rap. Yeah. Like, I can see him trying to make that go in a, mm -hmm. in a rhyme scheme. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that, that's allegedly she has suffered mm -hmm. or whatever. But look, when he hit up, like, all right, I'm a, I'm a, when he promoted her to chief of staff, with the four hundred mil, with the four million dollar salary, she was four like, million. "All right," and then <laughs> four million yeah, four and three million, million severance. Yeah, and she was like, "All right." Then he turned around and fired her. You fired you and offered to pay her three million dollar severance. That's and they never paid. I know she made it. Oh, so she's going for okay. I get it. So yeah. she, if there's a contract, she it's it's cut and dry. She's gonna be owed some money. Yeah, yeah. pretty much. So. Is my penis racist? <laughs> the white women want to taste it. Hey. <laughs> I can see that coming right. Bold, I can see that uh, being put in the rap right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
Well, that was just a mess. All right. Thank that was you, a mess. Jeff. Yeah, that, that was a mess. That, that, that was. was a mess. All right. When we come back, <laughs> we got my uh, call show announcement. Huge announcement we'll do when we come back. And then we got front page uh, news with Morgan Wood. So don't go anywhere. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. You're checking out The Breakfast Club. That's One. right. A lot of you guys have been DMing, emailing. we The Breakfast Club, by the way. Emailing, texting me, asking me about The Car Show. And we are back. The Drive Your Dreams Car Show is touching down August 17th at the Meadowlands Expo Center in Jersey, all right? It's indoor, outdoor car show this year. So we have food trucks. We have every type of car, old school cars, bikes, trucks, American muscle, and more. And, you know, every year we do it for the community, right? Kids five and under are free. Every kid in the building, well, while supplies last, we'll get a book back with... with uh, everything for school supply related. So pencil, pens, scissors, glue, textbooks, notebooks, and all that for your kids. Kids five and under, free, and kids get free haircuts. All right. We got celebrity cars from Offset. Cardi B. Mm. 50 Cent. French Montana. A Boogie with the Hoodie. Cash Cobain, Bay Swag, and more. So get your tickets now. Yeah, you could have been let that drum roll. Yeah, that's what I was waiting. I was was waiting for the music. Music never came. (laughs) Music never came. (laughs) You could have been let the drum roll. But once again, it's going down August 17th at the Meadowlands Expo Center in Jersey. Indoor and outdoor. Your favorite celebrity cars. Cars from all types of things. American muscles, exotics, old school cars, bikes, trucks, and more. There are rides, jumpies, face painting for the kids. So much going on. Parking is absolutely positively free. Okay, okay. So we're talking about a show that for less than $40, you get all of that, all right? And I'm talking, again, kids five and under are free. Free haircuts for the kids. Also, Brad, backpacks. Why you about the drum roll back? Right, why you about the drum roll back? music. <laughs> <laughs> so that's August 17th. Get your tickets. Tickets are on sale right now, and there's early bird tickets, so save yourself a lot of money, and I can't wait to see you guys. August 17th, the Drive Your Dreams Car Show okay. is back. It's brought to you by Lincoln Tech, Monster Energy, and East Jeep. So get your tickets if you haven't got your tickets. It's on sale right now. All right. All right. Now, Jess, can I have your truck for the car show? Uh, if you're going to help pay it off, sure. What you mean, help pay it off? Only or like maybe $9,000 more on it. <laughs> I just want it for one day, just a couple hours. Oh, all right. All right, cool. Charlemagne. Nope. I can't have your car? I don't have nothing. Yes, you do. What? The, you want my Escalade? Yes. It's got 300,000 miles on it. So? Give him the Subaru. I love you, you, you get the Subaru. You have a Subaru? Yes. Yeah. Gas efficient. Yeah. That's right. You ain't got no damn Subaru. Yeah, damn sure. All right, I'll take your Subaru. So <laughs> once again, August 17th, the Drive Your Dreams car show is back. Meadowlands Expo Center in Jersey. Indoor, you can get my outdoor Maxima. car I'll show. I'll let you get the Sentra. I got a Sentra for real. You ain't got no goddamn Sentra. I do Sentra. got a Nissan Sentra. Do they still mm-hmm. make Nissan Sentra? They don't even make Nissan no, Sentra make anymore. I got a Nissan Sentra, you boy. You don't make no Nissan Sentra. Right. Okay. So get you your see, tickets now. I pull up in shut things down. you would be understanding Shut things down with a Sentra is crazy. I pull up in that 2024. Or Nissan no. Sentra Compact car, you think it's a game? Not at all. all right. Watch. <laughs> Not at Watch. all. Family fun day. I can't wait to see you guys August 17th. And front page news is next. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Jess Hilarious, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Let's get back in some front page news. Morgan, good morning. Morning, morning. How y'all doing? How you We're feeling? What's up, Peace, girl? Morgan. We're all good. Yeah, so let's get into some crazy news this morning. The social platform X now allo- allows pornography with some restrictions. Now, if you know, you know, to some extent, this is not new. But I'm not going to get too much into that. The Elon Musk-led company, formerly known as Twitter, shared an official update to its usage policies. It says you may share consensually produced and distributed adult nudity or sexual behavior provided it's properly labeled and not prominently displayed. The update adds that X believes users should be able to create and share material with sexual themes as long as it's consensual. It calls it a legitimate form of artistic expression and don't complain about it if you're still on to on x mm-hmm. okay because that's what y'all love to do y'all love to complain about elon musk y'all love to complain about what's on x but y'all steady over there letting them tweets fly are them x do they call them tweets still because it's not twitter i don't even know what you call them they x's. call them x's it seems like they're having a problem with money <laughs> if they're starting to do things like that they, yeah, they want more people sure to go to the site. off of the app that's yeah. the thing that's what that's it seems like. Content. I haven't been on X since 2018. If you, if you see anything from me on X, that's my promo team posting stuff. I don't go over there. Same. 
Save the kids from X. Anyways, well, meanwhile, primary election season is still underway, and voters will head to the polls in five states today. Primaries are being held in New Jersey, Iowa, Montana, New Mexico, and South Dakota. Montana Republicans will select their nominee to take on Democratic Senator John Tester, who's considered one, one of the most vulnerable Democrats in this election cycle because they are looking to fill more seats. Um, Republican candidate Tim Sheehy was endorsed by former President Trump in February. In New Jersey, Congressman Andy Kim is expected to be embattled Senator Bob Mendez for the Democratic nomination for Senate, as Mendez is facing trial on federal bribery charges. Mendez, meanwhile, is reportedly trying to save his seat by running as an independent. Make sure y'all register to vote. Thank you, Morgan. That's your front page news. I'm Morgan Wood. Follow me on social at Morgan Media. And you can follow more news coverage at Black Information Network and BINnews.com. All right. And when we come back, we have the governor of Pennsylvania, Josh Shapiro, joining us. So don't move. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. It's DJ NV Just Hilarious, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We have our sister Angela Rye with us this morning. Yes, indeed. And we got a special here. guest in the building, Governor Josh Shapiro. Welcome. Good morning. How good you feeling this you morning? Guys. Good morning, feeling Governor. Good. Working hard, feeling good. You're not related to Ben Shapiro, are you? Hell no. <laughs> no. <man. laughs> he said that fast. That's a visceral Hell reaction. No. <laughs> man, every so often, we, you know, when he says some crazy thing, we mm-hmm. got to go tweet, hey, just a reminder, I'm not related to Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I have a short list of people who I would like to see, you know, run for president one day, and you are on that list. Is, is that something you have aspirations of doing? First off, I, I appreciate that you take some note of the work we're doing in mm-hmm. Pennsylvania. Like, sincerely, it means mm-hmm. a lot to me. I, I'm all in for Joe Biden, and and I think this is a moment where we've had some conversations. You've, you know, candidly, you've pushed the party, you've pushed mm-hmm. others to maybe think about some things that we hadn't thought about in the past. But we're locked, and this is a binary choice between Donald Trump and Joe Biden. I'm going to do everything in my power to make sure Joe Biden gets elected. Listen, I hear the conversation, I hear the chatter, I hear the noise. I'm humbled by it, mm-hmm. truly. But honestly, I don't wake up at night in the middle of the night thinking about it. I wake up in the middle of the night thinking about the work I'm doing for Pennsylvania, the work I got to do as governor. Mm-hmm. And I think if you stop thinking about that, if you stop thinking about your responsibilities, then you don't serve the people of Pennsylvania well. And that's my focus. Before we get into the questions, how did you get here? How did you get into public service? What made you say this is something I want to do? Was it uh, something that was done wrong by your family? What got you to yeah. this position and said, I want to run in this crazy politics game? You know, look, I grew up in a comfortable middle class home. My mm-hmm. mom, a school teacher. She was a public school teacher in Philly till she had me and my siblings and she was an educator later in her life. My dad was just like the local pediatrician, the local baby doc. They were very focused on helping others. Mm-hmm. And also, as I said before, you know, Charlemagne, faith played a really central role in our lives. Every Friday night we were around that Sabbath dinner table, something my wife and I continue to do for our kids today grounding us in in our faith and our faith that teaches us to go out and work for others and so i didn't grow up thinking i wanted to be in politics i certainly didn't grow up thinking i was ever going to be governor but i did grow up thinking i had a responsibility to others i had work i needed to do for others my parents instilled that in me in Mm -hmm. an early age it wasn't until later in life actually in college where I thought I was going to be a doctor like my dad, and I flunked out of Mm pre-med. I was on the basketball team there, got cut from the basketball team. Both things happened in the exact same day, and I thought my life was over, right? Mm -hmm. And then literally that night, someone knocked on my dorm room door and said, hey, you should run for student government. I'm like, why would I ever want to do that? It was like never on my mind. Mm -hmm. As I look back on that pivotal day, which sort of set me on this path, I realized the truth is service was always there for me. I just didn't exactly know how I was going to do that service. So... That's how it happened for me. One of the things that we know shapes public policy often are the things that we see on TV. There's um, a show that's very popular out of of Philadelphia right now, Abbott Elementary. It's the one show I'm going to watch religiously. Yes. And of course, Quinta Brunson is creator. You talked about your mother being a public school teacher. How influential um, has that show? How has that been for you? given your own connection to the public school system. Of course, you had a billion dollar increase in the budget um, this year um, to go towards basic education in Pennsylvania. Yeah, look, I'm proud as governor that we fought hard and successfully got done the largest increase in public education in the history of Pennsylvania. And by the way, uh, I did that being the only governor in the entire country with a divided legislature. So I got Mm -hmm. a Senate led by Republicans, House led by Democrats, 
Fun fact, there's only two divided legislatures in the yeah. whole country. That's the Congress of the United States. They don't get a whole lot done. And the Pennsylvania legislature. So we, had, we fought hard for that. I think what Abbott Elementary means to me or, or sort of says to me, and I, I realize it, it's sort of different for everybody, is it shows the struggles. It shows right. the inequities, but it also shows the love that these teachers, that these these administrators have for these kids and the love the kids have back. And I think, isn't that the story of so many mm-hmm. schools that, you know, these kids being able to do well, these teachers being able to do well, despite the fact the government hasn't always been there for them in an equitable manner. That's one of the biggest challenges we're facing in Pennsylvania, which is not just the dollars that go to school, which is important, right? right? And I'm proud of the money we put in, but the distribution formula, and I hate to kind of nerd out on you here, but I got too many kids learning who were learning on empty bellies. I mean, yeah. you think about yourself. You, you can't do this show without breakfast, without you, your coffee. You without, about it this morning. Whatever. Yeah, and so we have big problems that I fought hard and successfully got universal free breakfast for mm-hmm. kids. And I had, you know, some people saying, well, kids should eat at home. Well, you know what? There are some kids who can't eat at home. And so we got to be there for them. Same thing with mental health. I know that's a huge issue for you. It's mm-hmm. been a big issue for me. I campaigned on it. I talk about it every day. We got a new $100 million, It's about to hopefully God will and grow to a $200 million fund just to allow schools to hire mental health counselors, have mental health resources online for kids. We got to solve these problems for our kids, and we've got to drive the dollars out in a more equitable way so students have a shot. I believe in making sure Pennsylvania is a place where everybody's you know, got the freedom to chart their own course and the opportunity to succeed. That starts in our classrooms. I got a question about some of the, the gun violence I hear a lot in Pennsylvania. Yeah. What's being done to make sure we slow that down or, or even stop that? And and I see a lot of uh, I see a lot of drug use in, in Pennsylvania. I mean, I'm seeing it all over the country, but I yeah. do see a lot in in part, parts of Brooklyn. I see it. I see parts of them in in Philly where it almost look like people look like zombies. Like they're yeah. so strung out. What what what's being done to make sure we take care of that? Yeah. Look, you got this dangerous combination on the streets in Philly and, and elsewhere, as you said, Envy, between those who are battling the disease of addiction. And my words are purposeful. Addiction is a disease, right. not a crime. Correct. Those who are battling mental health challenges and too many damn guns on our streets, infecting these neighborhoods and our kids with these poisons that were claiming too many lives. Mm-hmm. So I've been a prosecutor. I've done that work. But I also understand if you're actually going to make our community safe, you got to invest in treatment. You've got to invest in mental health. And one of the things I'm real proud of as governor is you also got to invest in community-based efforts to reduce violence. So yeah, we're hiring more cops, and I'm not ashamed to say that. And challenge me on that if you want. But we're also investing hundreds of millions of dollars in violence prevention money, money for community groups, money for church groups, money for the folks that are doing the hard work of ideally with kids, keeping guns out of the hands of kids, showing them a way to resolve their disputes without picking up a gun. Understanding that when you pick up that gun in the first place, we've probably failed that child and that generation if we let them think that that's the answer to their problems. So we got a lot of work to do, and my bottom line here is you got to come at it in a multidisciplinary way. It's law enforcement, it's community groups, it's mental health, it's drug treatment, it's all of that. We're seeing some progress. Listen, I'm not going to come on your radio show and say we're out of the woods by any stretch. Mm -hmm. But we are seeing some progress in the data. That said, if you're a mom that lost her kid, let me tell you something. The data doesn't matter to you, no matter how good it it, it's it's getting. So we got to keep at it. We got to keep investing. We got to keep doing this hard. Why why more police officers? Though I agree with all the investments you're making in mental health and you know you know fighting drug addiction. But why more police officers? Because people will say more police officers don't essentially make streets safe. I think police officers need to be properly trained. They need to look like the communities that they are sworn to serve and protect. And we've got to make sure there is order in our communities. You go walk through these communities, as I do, and you listen to folks in communities. They want more police. Now, they want their constitutional rights protected, but they want to make sure that if somebody's wreaking havoc on their block, that order is restored. And I think you do that by making sure you hire police, again, properly trained, look like the communities are sworn to protect, hold them accountable if they break the rules, but make sure that you've got, you know, order, you've got peace, you got security in a neighborhood. If a neighborhood isn't safe, kids can't learn. If a neighborhood's not safe, families can't thrive. Small businesses can't open. Small businesses can't do well. So you've got to make sure you create that safety. Safety is not only coming from police, but safety is coming from a multitude of the investments like I was talking about before with Envy. 
All right, we got more with Governor Josh Shapiro. When we come back, the governor of Pennsylvania is the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Jess Hilary, Charlamagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Our sis Angela Ra is with us this morning, and we're kicking it with Governor of Pennsylvania, Josh Shapiro. Let me ask you a question. You know, we talked about guns before, right? And the law has changed in the last five years, right? Very lenient when it comes to guns, right? So I'm reading it now, and it says uh, Pennsylvania is an open carry state without a permit, and Pennsylvania does not limit the type of weapon which a person may possess. It could be a handgun, rifle, shotgun, or assault weapon. Yeah. What are your thoughts on the fact that it's been so lenient in the last yeah. five years? I mean, at one time, you could not own a gun in, in New York and New Jersey, and now with the right permit, you can carry yeah. it anywhere you need to. Yeah, and, and to be clear, if you're going to conceal carry, you need a permit. Right, open yeah. permit for non-concealable. Right. Conceal, you need a permit. But it's a lot easier now. Before, it was almost impossible. I think the key here is keeping guns out of the hands of those who shouldn't have them. Criminals, youth, making sure we've got universal background checks. That's something I've been pushing for for some time. Understanding that we can both, and this is a big deal. This is something I, I deal with every day as governor of Pennsylvania. We can respect the heritage of those who hunt in our rural communities and are responsible gun owners and appreciate the fact that that mom in North Philly doesn't want to see her kid get shot mm -hmm. when he's walking home from school. And you can accomplish both without restricting the rights of either of those individuals. And, and, those that they represent. It is really important that we have these honest conversations. Now, again, I got this divided legislature, right? So it's real hard to get stuff like this done, but we've been having more and more honest conversations about that. I go in these rural communities. I talk to these mostly Republican leaning, you know, Pennsylvanians, and I say to them, I'm not here to take away your gun rights, but we can all agree these guns shouldn't be in the hands of kids. These guns shouldn't be ha in the hands of criminals. You know what? They agree. And so what I'm trying to do is bring about some more common sense when it comes to our gun laws in Pennsylvania. I think it's a model for where we need to go in this country. There's a lot of things that you've done that I like, man. Um, the probation reform yeah, with Meek Mill, yep. the, uh, the clean slate 3.0. Yep. Can you talk to those? And the criminal justice reform. Can you talk yeah. to some of that stuff? It's been a big priority of mine. You, know, you might think it's sort of strange. Hey, wait, a guy who is a prosecutor is also now leading an effort on criminal justice reform mm -hmm. and uh, second chances. Look, I think Pennsylvania needs to be a place. I think America needs to be a place where everybody's got the freedom to chart their own course, the opportunity to succeed. It starts in our classrooms. It goes through our small businesses. For some, it goes through a union trade hall. For others, it goes through the military. We got to create economic opportunity for people. But for those that we fail for those who didn't get a chance, for those who get caught up in the criminal justice system. We also have to have a heart that believes in second chances. And I do. The legislation, the historic legislation that I worked on with Meek, that I worked on with others um, in the legislature who did incredible work on this, folks like Jordan Harris, Joanna McClinton, Tony Williams, and others. Um, it says what our values are in Pennsylvania, that we're forgiving, that we believe in second chances, that we want to make sure you can get back up on your feet and get a shot to start your small business, go on your kids, you know, school, you know, trip, whatever it, it may be. Uh, and I couldn't have been more proud and frankly, more emotional to sign those bills into law. So now we wipe out, that's the clean slate part, wipe out part of, uh, or some of your prior offenses to give you a chance to get back up on your feet. We basically cap the amount of time you can be on probation. Look, Meek brought attention to this by virtue of the fact that he was having technical violations that were landing him back in prison. Understand, people literally aren't breaking the law. They are not committing another crime, and then they were being sent back to jail because of these technical violations. That's crazy. He was trying so, to take his son to school. Yeah, so that is now um, that has now been addressed. We've got these what I'd call sort of a soft cap, an opportunity for those not to end up behind bars, not to end up not being able to provide for your family. Mm -hmm. It's really, really meaningful stuff. And and by the way, Meek deserves a lot of credit. He and I have become really good friends over a number of years. We've had a lot of raw and honest conversations. And if he wasn't willing to put himself out there and share of himself and be vulnerable, which is you know not something any of us like to mm -hmm. do, and, and certainly he, he didn't like to do, but as a result of, of him being out there, He's helping a whole lot of people whose names are not Meek Mill, who aren't famous, who don't have, um, you know, audiences necessarily with the governor or with other elected officials. And um, I think Pennsylvania is a more just place because of his contributions and, and the hard work of many of us. You talked about um, being all in for Joe Biden. And of course, mm -hmm. last week, um, there was some groundbreaking news, historical news um, that came out with uh, our former president, 
um, having 34 criminal yeah. indictments. Um, a lot of folks have been talking about the need for Joe Biden to pardon Donald Trump. Um, if that were to come up with the federal cases, what is your posture on that? Given the fact that you are responsible for balancing a divided state legislature. Yeah. Well, first off, just I'll, I'll be a legal nerd here for a sec. I'm sorry to, sorry to do that, but he was convicted in a state court. So any pardon Joe Biden could give wouldn't matter because the federal charges, right? That'd be mm-hmm. a federal charge. And who knows if they're ever going to come to fruition prior to the election. Mm-hmm. Um, here's what I think we need to remember, you know, for as challenged as our system can be sometimes, um, this was a case that was decided by 12 ordinary Americans, 12 of Donald Trump's fellow Americans heard all this evidence. They considered the law as presented to them. They made sure that they were diligent in their deliberations and they found unanimously 34 times that he broke the law. And I think, you know, whatever your politics are, whether you like Donald Trump, don't like Donald Trump, we have to respect the process. I've, I've seen the process up close, again, as Attorney General. For all of its flaws, juries work, and juries need to be respected in our system. And so I think the jury should have, obviously, he's got a right to appeal. He'll have his appeals. He'll be heard by the courts. But I think the work of juries needs to be respected here. Do you, you think the Trump conviction is going to cause political retaliation in the courts? Because like even jury selection begins in the Hunter Biden trial. Do you think yeah. that it will be a tit-for-tat type thing? I want to say no because I believe in the system. Come on. And I, I mean, you might, no, no, I'm not, no, I'm not trying to bullshit you. I mean, like, I really believe in this system. But you believe in the, that other party, the MAGA version of that party. <laughs> it is my hope that judges, juries, prosecutors, defense attorneys will ultimately do the right thing, which is just simply follow the facts, follow the evidence, and render a fair judgment. Um, what scares me about Donald Trump is the way he wants to weaponize mm-hmm. our justice system mm-hmm. and use it against his enemies. They've said it. He has. Yeah. The way he says literally he wants to be a dictator. L- let me ask you, you don't have to be a great student of history to know. Think about all the dictators that have lived throughout history. You know, how many minority groups do well under a dictator? Not many, mm-hmm. right? Minorities get screwed when there are dictators, and Donald Trump has promised to be a dictator. This guy's extremist. He is dangerous. He is someone who is out there to exact revenge. We don't do well when that happens. And so I think while I believe in the system, and that's why I kind of paused when you asked that, not not that I was trying to evade your question, but like I want to believe in the system, but I'm scared to death if he's in charge of the system and the way he might try and use it to exact revenge. Mm. But you talked about the system holding. And so where do you find the balance in critiquing the system that you so believe in? Yeah. Right. And saying this is an absolute no, but let me tell you where we can improve. I do believe in the system, mm-hmm. but I also know the system is flawed. Let me give you yeah. a concrete example. And I saw this up close and personal. What I routinely saw where there was a breakdown, where there was an injustice done, is where someone didn't have access to legal counsel, yes. where a defendant was showing up in court basically with one arm tied behind yeah. their back because they didn't have a good, um, a good lawyer. Because my view is if you got a fair fight, then that's a big part of making sure that the system works. Still got to deal with bias. You still got to deal with personalities, things like that. But you got to at least start with that fair fight. And now we are beginning to have that in Pennsylvania by virtue of the funding for indigent defense. That's a concrete example. And that also says to someone maybe who has never been involved in the system, hey, I can have a little bit more faith in this process. I can have a little bit more faith in how the systems work and make it just a little bit better. All right, we got more with Governor Josh Shapiro, so don't move. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Yep, we are The Breakfast Club. DJ Envy, Jess Larry, Charlemagne the Guy. We got Angela Rye with us this morning as we're kicking it with the governor of Pennsylvania, Josh Shapiro. Charlemagne? Another thing that you do that I love, you know, in regards to messaging, you have the community text number. Yeah. For people who have questions and, and comments. Do you read all those texts? I read a lot of them. I, I'd be okay. lying if I told you I read them all. And I get sort of, I have my team give me a, you know, a sampling. Of them. And by the way, good ones, bad ones, ones with questions, one where someone got help, one where someone didn't get mm-hmm. help. And we're constantly working to change that. I, look, I think in government, there should be no wrong door to reach your elected representatives. Your governor, your mayor, your representative, you name it. We shouldn't have to force the public to bend toward the way we do it. We need to bend toward that. That's right. And so if they want to text me, great. I'm going to listen. It's another reason why I don't just stand up at you know the press conference in front of the podium with the seal, the whole thing. I do some of that, but I also 
will go on TikTok or Instagram and do a live with someone about the very topic that I'm fighting for and reach people where they are. And that's, look, I'm not here to blow smoke, but like that's one of the reasons why I think y'all have been so successful. You're reaching people where they are. You're talking about topics that matter to them. Not that you're not forcing them to, you know, sort of bend to what's on your mind. You're in touch with where the community is. And I think whether it's on the radio, whether it's on TikTok, whether it's in the newspaper, you got to meet people where they are. And that's what I'm focused on on doing every day. What about critiquing the party? Like, as a Democrat, what do you think they're getting wrong? I think Democrats gave up on rural communities across America, certainly across Pennsylvania, uh, got too damn elite and started erecting artificial barriers to entry. And I'm trying to rip away those artificial barriers to entry and show up in these communities. Let me give you a couple concrete points. My first day in office, literally my first full day, um, I signed an executive order doing away with the college degree requirement for state jobs in, in government, 92% of our state jobs. That's 67,000 jobs that now you wouldn't need a college degree for. And by the way, in the years since I've done that, 60% of our new hires don't have a college degree. Why do I bring that up? There was an artificial barrier to entry. It was shutting people out for no damn good reason. Sure, you, you know, if you're going to be a lawyer, we want you to have a law degree. If you're going to be a doctor working in the state, we want you to have a medical degree. But beyond that, like you shouldn't have these artificial barriers. And I think what what our party has done too much over the last generation is we've we've erected these barriers and said to certain people, "We don't want you in the conversation." So I'm trying to do away with that. We've also said to certain communities, we're not only not showing up, we don't give a damn about you. Let me tell you something. I show up in these rural communities. I talk to folks. I listen. I deliver for them. And the election results show that they're, you know, I guess happy with the work I'm doing. But I think what it also has shown me, and I'm always learning as an elected official, is actually you go to one of these conservative rural communities or you go to one of these more whatever progressive urban communities, everybody basically wants the same thing. It's four things. They want a good school for their kids. Right. They want safe communities. Right. They want economic opportunity. Right. And they don't want anybody f-ing with their freedom. That's right. You know, they want you to protect their freedoms. And we have too many people right now losing freedoms, losing opportunity. And instead, I think I'm trying to bring people together, Republican and Democrat alike, to focus on those four things. And we're making progress so that I can give a speech in Philly and I can give a speech in rural Venango County. I can go and have a picnic in a rural community and go to the Roots picnic last weekend and say the same thing to everybody. And I think that level of consistency um, we have not always shown in a party. That way of showing up, that way of erecting artificial barriers to stop entry, that's been a problem for our party, and we're trying to change that in Pennsylvania. So, so as a Democrat, what do you think Republicans are getting right it's it's a hard question because I think you have to separate out kind of that Trump wing mm-hmm. of the party from, you know, sort of the, the common sense Republicans, many of whom I deal with in Pennsylvania every day. I think they understand effectively the importance of creating economic opportunity in communities that have been left behind. I think they understand. I think I understand this as well, but you asked me about their party. Mm-hmm. They understand that oftentimes providing capital addresses an issue way better than some big program that takes a long time to set up and then ultimately doesn't work. I I think those are some areas where, you know, I respect the work that, you know, some Republicans in Pennsylvania are doing right now. So why don't more Republicans that are, I guess, of sound mind, Mm -hmm. how come more of them aren't standing up against MAGA? Why are they just letting their party just succumb to MAGA? Yeah, I mean, I understand why you're using that term. I don't use that term, MAGA. I, I think in many ways it's actually disrespectful to to the voters who believe in in that stuff. But we'll agree to kind of disagree mm-hmm. on that. I, it is, but it is a difference between traditional conservative mm-hmm. yeah. values and what we're seeing now. A hundred percent. What I don't understand is just look at the the sort of election data. And again, I'm keep coming back to Pennsylvania because it's what I know best. Donald Trump wins Pennsylvania by 44,000 votes in 2016. Since that time, Donald Trump has lost Pennsylvania in 2020, and every single one of Trump's offspring, including the guy I beat for governor, right? They've all lost every election. And in addition to that, they've lost branches of government at the federal level. They've lost ground in Pennsylvania. They've lost ground in other you know, swing states. I don't get why they keep following this guy and following the approach he brings, following his extremism, because like 
e- even if you believe it, and I think most of them don't believe it because mm-hmm. they're frankly, they're just weak cowards that are afraid. And so they just sort of go along with him. But it's also just not a winning formula. If you look at who's winning, it's me. It's Gretchen Whitmer. It's Wes Moore. It's mm-hmm. Andy Bashir. It's Gavin. It's people that are doing common sense things in these states. And go look at the swing states. Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, Michigan, Arizona, Georgia. I mean, you're seeing Democrats win there on common sense messages, and you're seeing the extremist Donald Trump clones losing there. Mm -hmm. So why they keep following this guy, I just don't know. It doesn't make any sense. There's reports that say nobody flies private in Pennsylvania more than you, Mike Rubin, and Meek Mill. (laughs) So what do you say to people who, that say the flights are coming out of the, the, the taxpayer's pocket? We have a state plane. We've had a state plane for, I don't know, mm-hmm. 30, 40 years. I can go back and check. And um, I get around Pennsylvania all the time. I get around meeting people where they are. I show up. I work my ass off as their governor. I kind of have this informal rule in my own head. I don't want to be in the office more than three days a week, which means I got four days to be out in the community somewhere, listening, learning, showing up. Um, and to be governor and show up in Erie and Philly in the same day, it's impossible by cars. I'm using the plane that other governors have used as well. And you know what? Um, showing up matters. And I think too often times our politicians hide and don't show up. I want to be there with the people. All right. And by the way, Mike flies on a hell of a much nicer plane. <laughs> <laughs> Final pitch to folks for November. There are going to be two names on this ballot and maybe a few other randos on there as well. This is a binary choice between Joe Biden and Donald Trump. But in many ways, I think this election is not about Joe Biden and Donald Trump. It's about all of us and what kind of country we want to keep building for ourselves. I think if we want to build that kind of country, there's only one choice in this election, and that's Joe Biden. All right. There you have it. Governor Josh Shapiro. Governor Josh Shapiro, current, thank you for joining us. Current Thanks, governor Ken. of Pennsylvania, former, uh, future president. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Great to be with you guys. That's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Psst. Good morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Jess Hilarious, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Let's Yo, salute to-, to Governor Shapiro for pulling up, man. That's right. Yes. Yeah, salute to Governor Shapiro. Salute to uh, our guy Q, man, Quincy, Quincy uh, Harris. Connected me and Governor Shapiro. Oh, okay, Quincy. Out in Philly. Yeah. yeah. There's radio in Philly. That's right. Shout so to Quincy. Q. That's right. All right, well, let's get to Jess with the mess. News is real. Weather is Jessica Robin Moore. Jess don't do no lies. Don't do no lies. Don't do no lies. She don't spare nobody. She don't spare nobody. She don't spare nobody. Worldwide Jess. Worldwide mess. On The Breakfast Club. She's a coach of shit. She was able to get y'all to see something and understand something that nobody could get you to see. It's time to set it off. So Benzino and his daughter, Coyle Ray, are back on bad terms. If you don't remember, Benzino was on We in Miami podcast about a month ago, and he seemed like he was defending R. Kelly. You got the audio? You he said, no, I ain't got the audio. <laughs> I ain't got that audio. Yeah, I ain't got that audio. I ain't want that one. Yo, I don't know what audio you talk about. Play it. He said, play it. <laughs> it's time for this. Do you think we should give R. Kelly a second chance? Everybody deserves a second chance. I know that Elvis, a lot of motherfuckers, 14, 15. I know with young girls to keep it 100, right? right? I'm I'm not into that. Again, the legal age is 16 years old. So does that make it right if a does it? Yes or no? To everybody on the table. Does that make it right? If it's legal, does it make it right if if a dates a 16 year old? Makes it very wrong. I don't agree. It's gross. All right, all right. So, but it's legal in America. So why the f*** is R. Kelly doing all this time? And Because you know why? Because they're 14 and thir- two years younger. Lord have mercy. Yeah, so after that interview, Coyle Ray, she shared a couple of tweets. And one of them was, I want everybody to know I want nothing to do with anything my father has going on. I haven't spoken to him in over a year. And I don't condone or respect any of those interviews he got going on. I don't respect his, his decision. And I really want nothing to do with him. Please don't even think of me when you see him. Um, well... Benzino recently did another interview on the Famous and Wealthy podcast and shared how he felt about Coy disowning him. He made a comment about the R. Kelly situation and said that she has she doesn't want to have anything to do with me no more because of the R. Kelly thing. But then, about four months ago, she's on the Math Hoffa show, and Math Hoffa, which I thought um, was a kind of crazy question, She he asked her, hey, when did you lose your virginity? She said at 14. And, I'm, and now first, right, I didn't know. You know what I'm saying, right? So I'm like... 
So here you are condemning me for saying what I'm saying, which is grown folks' conversation, which I never mentioned you, which really you shouldn't even really involve yourself. But since you did involve yourself, is what you do. How can you say that when you just said that you lost your virginity at 14? So is the guy that you lost your virginity at 14 with, is he a pedophile? Uh, he probably was 14, too. Yeah, like, we, we don't, don't know. His age. Like, don't know his yeah. Age. yeah, so I, I just, I feel like... Yeah, okay. She lost her our virginity at fourteen. But I think he's so pressed about the R. Kelly thing, like he's linking it to that. Mm -hmm. Um, that could have the guy that she he could have been a little boy too, because she was certainly a little girl when she lost her virginity. Yep. But he could have been a little boy too, you know, who she lost her virginity to. So I mean, I I I would like to see uh either Coy Ray and Benzino because that's what it feels like. Coy Ray and Benzino don't have a relationship, and they learn so much about each other listening to each other on different platforms right mm -hmm. you know what I mean mm -hmm. and it's like yo y'all are father and daughter mm -hmm. y'all y'all should sit down and have a conversation well they need to stay maybe. off the internet I mean, that's the most thing they gonna be on the yeah. internet but maybe they don't need to be talking Talk about, about each other relationship, or yeah. if you hear something about your daughter on a podcast or you hear something about your pops on a podcast how about y'all talk to each other yeah you know what I mean instead yeah. of playing it out on I agree line. on social media mm -hmm. yeah. or in these podcast interviews Okay, Sexy Red goes viral for Roots Picnic set design. So she performed at the Roots Picnic uh, over the weekend. And pictures and videos from her performance started to circulate and fans were not happy. Sexy Red had a huge red hat on the stage. Like it was big. Like it was like the whole set design um, that said make sexy great again. Obviously a play on the Donald Trump's make America's great again hats and people automatically assumed that this was an endorsement because of the interview that she did last year with Theo Vaughn who are sexy red people talk about I'm dead <laughs> they talking I'm, about are you him? trying to call him sexy red <laughs> I'm just saying hey is the do you think more people are going to support Trump now and in the I hood like or Trump. no yeah they support him in the hood because at first I don't think <laughs> people was with him like they thought he was racist saying little shit and you know against women but once he started getting black people out of jail and giving people their free money, oh, baby, we love Trump. We need him back in office. Yeah, that, a little bit of free money goes a long way. We huh? need him back. <laughs> I don't know why I just sensed a little bit of shade in that last line that he said, Theo said, yeah, a little bit of money goes a long way, doesn't <laughs> it? I found that part very funny. Some fans defended her by saying she has the freedom of choice to support whoever she wants, and other fans showed their disappointment in her. When Sexy saw people's reactions uh, to her support for Trump, she hopped on X to clear things up, and she recently tweeted, "It's Sexy Red for president. I'm on my own. I'm my own candidate. I don't. Uh, I'm not endorsing anybody. Period." Yeah, so. people do the. They when she does have the right to you know uh, support whoever she wants politically, but yeah. people do the red hat and change the slogan all the time. Mm -hmm. yeah, all the time. Make America trap again. Uh, yeah, she, make I was America say, she's not again. the first one to do that. Not at all. She said, "Make America sexy again." Yeah. Don't let the red hat trigger you that much because people literally, you know, do the, uh, they change the slogan all the time. All the yeah. time. Make DJs great again. We, we've seen it all, all all over the place. I never heard that one. I yeah, never they have seen that it nowhere. Yeah, they have that <laughs> I'm going to make it. Okay. I'm going to make it. <laughs> yo, Evan, you're so funny, yo. <laughs> I would right. change the color if I did it, though. Like, she, she, she should yeah. have. But that kills but, the point. But yeah, There's she's, a red hat. she's actually yeah. sexy red. Right. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I get mm -hmm. it. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So and it also creates like for clickbait, like because if they, they see she it, got they, what you wanted, yeah. you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. So it is what it is. But uh, with a little bit of seconds left, y'all, I will be at the City Winery in New York, New York this weekend, June eighth and June 9th. That's uh, Saturday and Sunday. I will be there. Get your tickets at www.citywinery.com um, slash New York City or JessLarisOfficial dot com. So yep, I'm in the city, New York this this Saturday and this Sunday. All right. Get your Tickets. Charlamagne, who you giving your donkey to? Man, for after the hour, uh, morning y'all right now, this is a very dark, dark donkey of the day. Uh, but a man named Timothy Lewis needs to come to the front of the congregation. We'd like to have a word with him. All right. Mm -hmm. We'll get to that next. So don't move. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Hey, wake up. Wake up. You're locked into The Breakfast Club. Good morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Just Hilarious. Charlamagne the guy. We are The Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building. Yes, indeed. Malcolm Mays. Hey, hey. Actor Malcolm Mays. How you feeling, brother? How you doing? I'm blessed, man. I'm here with y'all, man. Yes, sir. Yeah. yeah. Actor and writer. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So, look, I'm going to jump straight into it. So, how much hate did you receive the last season of Power? Because you was acting up, Uncle Lou. Oh, I was, oh, your man's just pressed me in the room. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pressed in the room? Yeah, bro. Okay. 
came in there and was like, hey, man, so, like, I f*** with you, but, like, I don't f*** with you. Yeah, like, yo, <laughs> it's a role, guys. Yeah, it's, I know. It's, it's so people don't see the role. They but just see the, the it, villain. We take it serious. I mean, I take it as a compliment. I told him in the room, I was like, hey, bro, it just means that you really, you know, I'm doing my job. That's yeah. all I mean, is I'm doing my work, so I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. But I'm like, I don't even drink, bro. Like, what is this? <laughs> oh, <laughs> like, oh, right. Do mm -hmm. people press you, though, when you're out in the public, like, really upset with your role? You know what? They do press me. The, it's You know who press me? Not the men. The women are the ones mm -hmm. who are like, yo, I can't, like, I'm they man. Like, <laughs> I can't believe you would do us like that. You are embarrassing us. Like, aunties, they <laughs> like, take it personal. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. so it's, but it's love, though. I love it. I was in Lamert Park, and that happened to me. Like, a, a woman with her baby in the stroller pulled up on me, like, mm -hmm. <laughs> like pulled up on me. Like, mm -hmm. you setting a bad example for the family. What family? <laughs> like, what are you talking about? My mom and grandma love me. What are you talking about? Your sister, like, your brother, your nephew, everybody. Yeah, but I realized that all the, and I think all the power universe men have to understand it's like you belong to black women once you're in a power universe. It's just what it is. Ooh, break that down that. a little bit more. You know, everything in the culture to me is at root black women. Whether it's Drake, whether it's Paramore, whether it, it don't matter what it is. It mm -hmm. don't shake unless they say it go. I feel like because this show is pretty much a modernized Black soap opera. Uh-huh. Yeah. In, in all the best ways. Yeah. Then that means that, like, we know who our main component and who our main advocate That's is. That's real. And therefore, you got to honor that. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. you got to accept that you in a relationship that you didn't ask to be in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you got to be okay with that. Right. How, how hard is it to get that character out of you once you not, like, taping? Is, uh, decompression is necessary. I feel like, for me, I... um. You know, channeling is a thing, but you gotta you gotta know who you are. Like once you know your North Star, you can always get back home. That's mm -hmm. how I feel about it. Mm -hmm. So it takes time, but you just gotta. I don't get confused. <laughs> like yeah. some people get confused. Yeah. Like it's not like Tupac the Juice and no shit like that. Like I know mm -hmm. who I am for real. Mm -hmm. yeah. I want to go guess. back from the start for people that don't know who Malcolm Mays is. How did you get started in the entertainment industry as far as acting and writing? How did how did you get started? What what made you start loving this game? Uh, I think it was damn. Every time I, I feel like Charlemagne is just trauma. Like he's just gonna trauma trigger me every time. Because <laughs> because I, I talk to you know. I'm here to listen, Malcolm. Um, <laughs> when my pops was around heavily in my life when I was younger, and my mom's was still like you know like it was like a family thing. Like you know going to Blockbuster for all those who are old enough to remember Ooh. Blockbuster, mm -hmm. Hollywood videos, mm -hmm. going to drive-in theaters. Like yep. it was communal, it was familial, and it's a time before everything kind of went left in my life. Before there was like street violence. Before my pops had to figure it out and did for a second. Before things changed. That's the thing I think that like connected me to movies because you could go anywhere. You could be with your family, have a good time, and you could be in the south of France watching James Bond or watching Mo Better Blues. I could experience New York in a mm -hmm. certain time period. Mm -hmm. I could, like it was it was a beautiful place and where black men and women were kings and queens in my household on television and on film. And um, I don't have I didn't have that experience where they were like we're not represented. I had that. My house was full of black art, black music, black films. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it was a place of comfort, and I think I fell in love with storytelling as a as a means of transportation and empathy. And from that point, since I was a kid, I was like five, six. I was like, this is what I want to do. And my mom was like, that's what we're doing. You know? So it was dope. Were you ever con um, concerned about them killing Lou off the last season? I don't give. No, like I, I'm no. blessed, bro. Like I won already. Like, like I know. I won. I, you know, it's so crazy. People ask me that, like, were you ever worried about dying? I'm like, bro, I got dying in real. I don't care about mm -hmm. no. I appreciate and love the fact that I got the ability to experience the crew I have. Mm -hmm. Patina Miller is a genius. Yes, you know, London Brown is amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, Makai is brilliant. Like, I love you know Haley Kilgore. My whole cast and crew, Sasha Penn, the writer, Courtney for incepting it. All of it is. We have the coolest crew. Like, we don't have no egos. We don't have no problems. We don't argue. Ain't no mess. Y'all don't see us outside. Mm -hmm. London sometimes talks too much because he's London and he's a comedian. And I was going to say, he be staging. He be on a comedian. He's a comedian. It's not the same thing. But, yeah. like, other than that, like, we don't get in no mess. We going to be outside. We be boring. That's why people don't really... <laughs> <laughs> we bored as We come home, do our work and all that. So, I've been blessed to have a great work environment mm -hmm. to make... A little bit of change Doing something I love And do something interesting Or different If they kill me tomorrow I told Sasha Like bro Just let me know So I can You know yeah. some, <laughs> Shake around with the mortgage right. And whatnot. Right. But other right. than that I'm good bro I had a great time It was beautiful We had a great run How okay. involved is 50 in, in everything Early on He was he was very much so involved okay. And then I think Later on He got you know Like you set it up You set up a business And mm -hmm. then you go do your you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Put the paint on the walls, make sure ain't nobody stealing from you. And then you're like, oh no, this is a good crew, good workers, but your you know, business and walk off. Like, yeah. yeah, 50 50, cool. You know, he be doing his thing. I think he be playing favorites, though. Do, do we? Yeah. yeah, he play favorites, but he don't know. I, that man could do no wrong in my eyes. I don't give what he do, honestly. You're saying that because you don't think you're one of his favorites, is basically what you're saying. No, I think that his favorites are based on like a marketing matrix that he runs in his head mm -hmm. I don't know if it's like people he would actually hang out with in real life I don't know I can't say for that mm -hmm. yeah. but I do know that he positions things so brilliantly 
you know, if you're in the running, it's because you're making the most money at the table or you are aligned with what he's doing. So that's what's going to get his attention, which makes perfect sense for marketing for your product. Mm -hmm. But I know that for me, um, I don't care whether he there or not. His presence has always felt like mm -hmm. he changed my life. I'm just yeah. what are you doing, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. You Do know? you watch any other um other shows, Power Universe? I try. Okay. Because I, I, I it's a it's a bunch of damn shows. Yes, yeah, too so, much. Yeah, it's too then, much for me. And then you're not only right. too much for me. And then you're not only doing uh you're not only doing that show, you're doing other things as well. But right. I ask that because a lot of times I see people like saying Moni Tahada or Raquel, like who oh. is the the more of a badass? Who would you right. pick? Well, Your you know, sister that's not fair. or Monet Tahada? That's not fair because you not. know you're not gonna ro first of all you're not gonna let me do what Fifty be doing. <laughs> like, I'm not doing that. Mm -hmm. You're not letting me put two Compare. black women against oh, each yeah. other. <laughs> what I will say is I'm a person who grew up in a very uh, what they call it tribalist mm -hmm. environment. Mm -hmm. So you know I'm rocking with gang and yeah. can't nobody. With Patino on television, mm -hmm. not just mm -hmm. against power and this mm -hmm. and that. Like, no, I don't care if it was uh, what's that white boy move show that's really good, Jason Bateman show. Um, was it Ozark? Oh, damn, yeah. just as good. Mm -hmm. Ozarks. I don't give a f if it's Ozark. Yeah. I don't care if it's Martin Scorsese's movie. Mm -hmm. Ain't you. nobody, even though Lily Gladstone is amazing. Mm -hmm. Patina Miller is top tier. Mm -hmm. Period. Don't matter. She her. And yeah. She needs to be acknowledged for it with the awards and all the things. Mm -hmm. She deserves it. So does everybody else on the cast. So, yeah, you're not going to give me like that. Look, love, Mary. Love, I Auntie. You. I got you. Love, Auntie. But we're not playing behind. The yeah. Team. Do you talk to the writing team about where you want the character Lou to go? Or are you just... We let Sasha. We, you know, there was, I think Sasha is good about letting us have input, but you let that man cook. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Right. Yeah, right. we let that man cook, and he just basically because you think I would have chose to be a alcoholic. <laughs> and yeah, and then and just start talking and too damn shit and feeling bad out of nowhere. I'm like, damn. Yeah, little. but you know, people take that shit serious, and I gotta go home. And that's the problem. <laughs> Yo, I keep hearing that from actors and actresses nowadays, and yeah. it's bugging me out. The first person I ever heard say that was Megan Good a couple years Facts. ago. Mm -hmm. I always say, uh, what's his name? What movie? What's love got to do with it? Ike Turner. What, uh, oh, Lawrence Fishburne. 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 I ain't Fishburne. like Lawrence Genius. Fishburne until he was Morpheus. And I was like, okay, now he's rubbing me up the right way. Because you hated but him as Ike. Did, yeah, but he did so. That's how great he did. And we was kids and we, had, and we was, was scared kid, of that man. I was man. like, why is he beating her up like that? My girl Raven was like, hey, I seen him as Ike at 10. I ain't stopped hating that man since. Yeah. And I was like, that man done been in Apocalypse <laughs> Now at 17 years old with Francis Ford Coppola. Also, that you can sit here and mm -hmm. not want to go watch him because he played the role too good. And yeah. once I seen that, I was like, oh, like you got to position yourself. Yeah. You got to make sure you're doing certain things. And so yeah. next time y'all see me, I'll probably have on a suit mm -hmm. <laughs> and I ain't going to be selling no drugs. I'll tell you like that. <laughs> so psychologically, how do you check yourself if you just out and about? Somebody be like, hey, you drunk rat. Oh, my ego ain't in this. Mm -hmm. Like, matter of fact, I might laugh with you like, hey, man, it was tough. Mm -hmm. yeah, like, mm -hmm. I ain't choose this. It chose, you know. All right, we got more with Malcolm Mays, of course, from Raising Canaan and season two of them. So don't move. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Jess Hilarious, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We're still kicking it with actor Malcolm Mays. You've seen him in Raising Canaan and season two of them. Jess? Another show I'm a fan of is them, both yeah. season one and two. Now, you play in one as yeah. Calvin. Yeah. And then season two came out. I thought you were so creative as a writer for that. It was so many pieces yeah. on them to the scare. How did you tap into that? Well, first of all, it's a team of six people in one room coming up with one idea. So mm -hmm. that helps. So mm -hmm. I'm not going to act like I'm just, you know. And yeah. little Marvin being the head of the ship. Little Shout Marvin out to is Marvin. Oh, my God. Little Marvin is amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and I say that to say, and I'm like, you know, and, and I'm going to keep doing this with Luke because I'm one of them people that when I'm wrong, I'm wrong just as loud as I was when I was right. Yeah. And, and I got to be honest. If I, f I did not believe in Luke in this role. Yeah. Wow. I did not. I did not believe in that man. I, I argued with Tony Saltzman, who's the second in the room, and Little Marvin about like, well, that's the choice we going? Because the character description looked nothing like him. Mm -hmm. The character description looked more like a young Forrest Whitaker, literally. Yeah. It had nothing. And Luke is handsome. <laughs> like, Very. He got abs. What the mm -hmm. f*** he going to do? Like, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So you and, was in there like, Kendrick, I hate the way that he yeah. talks. <laughs> <laughs> I hate the way that he's dressed. Well, not him as a person. I hate his abs. Because, you right. know, Luke was in an R&B group when we was kids. Mm -hmm. When we was teenagers. And he was singing his ass off. So, like, I've always been a fan of Luke's. But mm -hmm. I just never was like, you know, like I'm like, I don't think he can do this. Mm -hmm. And so I fought, like, a little bit. I was bumping up against when they was like, we're not shooting in LA, we're shooting in Atlanta. I'm like, oh, this is Then they're like, also, we're casting Luke James. I'm like, y'all, after all this work we done put in to build this story, and so yeah. like, you know how intricate it was? So good. Because if somebody, it, one actor can ruin all of the story, mm -hmm. it don't matter how good it is. Y'all got to get up there and say the word. So I am humbled and appreciative to be wrong. Mm -hmm. Being wrong is a fun thing sometimes. Absolutely. That's beautiful as Because I was so wrong. 
that man is was he did his stuff he put his foot in it he stepped all over it and i'm so glad that we had people like little marvin with vision and tony saltzman with vision and the casting directors and a team of writers who are able to you know we can disagree have difference of opinion and still get a great product yeah, yeah i respect that because that's not hate that's not ego driven no. that's man like mm-hmm. we've created this great product i wanted to continue mm-hmm. to be to good be great, i don't yeah. think that's the person for it but you you want to be wrong i want to be wrong. you want to be wrong and i was and yeah. it was nice after that did you speak to luke about it no, I haven't had a chance to. Oh, really? I've seen him on yeah, here. This is the first time he's hearing yeah. the, the No, this is going to be the first time he sees it. And, bro, you that. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. You him. You Hemothy. Yeah. Hemothy J- Luke, Hemothy James, Chapter 3, and mm-hmm. 5. That's you. Um, and I, Because you got to give people their flowers. We don't mm-hmm. see each other. We don't run into each other. And then I went back and looked at some of the stuff he did on the shot because I don't watch the show. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, this last season, he was really sensitive and really vulnerable and playing some weird, really like was. doing some things that I, I appreciate as an artist. Because me, I talk, but not about the person. Just like when you said somebody come up to me be like, your role, and like, I can't believe you did A, B, and C. I don't take things personal. Mm-hmm. So I, so when I critique something, it's literally because I'm worried about the story, the art, giving our people quality so that they can empathize with situations they mm-hmm. never would have empathized with. Mm-hmm. So they yeah. can go places they never would have otherwise went. And so when somebody say an actor, I don't, I, yeah, there's personalities. There are people who are fun that we like to watch. They're great to watch. They're entertainment. But then there's mm-hmm. that make you feel your soul. Yeah. And mm-hmm. I don't play with that. So it wasn't because I didn't think Luke was a good actor or talented. It's because, bro, this is precious. I need you to caretake and guide this for real. Mm-hmm. And he did that. And that was a very complex role. Yes. I ain't gonna lie. When I first, when I, I when I seen him too, and then I was like, I'm James gonna be right. The Mr. Gaines, like what? What? You know, he made so, himself ugly. I don't yeah, know how he did that. I don't either. <laughs> to this day, and it was amazing because in the in the show, I don't want to ruin it uh, totally, but he couldn't remember. He was trying to be an actor. Yes, and and it the way it unfolded was. He really couldn't get the hood thing down, but yeah. he was trying, like, when he spooked the girl. The crazy yeah. with the stocking and all yes, that. Yeah, yes. shout out to the team, bro. Shout out to the whole gang. Yeah. Them too, they went crazy. I love them. Mm-hmm. They, they are. We all deserve our flowers for that. Yeah. yeah. And even what you said, uh, going back to when you said um, one one character can, like, mess up the story. I ain't gonna lie, and this is my brother, man. I, when I first saw Iman, I said, what the f*** is he gonna plant my father? <laughs> he felt like somebody daddy, too. Right, you know, <laughs> but as I'm watching, I'm like, oh, like, this is a star-studded cast yeah, for this. And dope. shout out to Deborah, Deborah, uh, oh, A-R-N-A. Oh, she God, is yeah. amazing. Season one and season two, I didn't know how y'all was gonna do it. No, she did it. But, I ain't even gonna Don't tell, even tell you. Him. You have yeah. to watch season one and season two. Yo, your penmanship is amazing. Thank I just you, wanted to give you. I was glad to be a part of the team. It's number two on Amazon. So like we are doing our thing. So shout out to the gang. Shout out to Deb. Deb, another unhyped talent. I don't know how that woman does what she does and don't nobody say nothing. It's crazy to me. Mm-hmm. I be like, what? Do mm-hmm. so you write too? Yeah, yeah. I wrote a movie recently that I'm trying to get made right now. Yeah. Is that uh, covers? Is oh that no, covers. That was a can. That was like the short version of a larger film that I did. They got into the camp. Okay, okay. Out of competition. Okay, good. Um, which was a blessing. You know, yeah. but the next one going to go crazy. It's called Program. I'm doing meetings on it right now, raising money. It's going to be it's gonna be a thing. I'm going to direct it, star in it. Boom, boom. Nice. It's uh-huh. more lucrative, but uh, acting or writing? Depends. Now, it's now for, mm, it's almost equivalent, but like, because my, my quote's pretty high as a writer because I wrote, Luja, oh, I'm on your ass. Mm. I'm on Pause. your ass. Mm. Pa- mm, you, I'm comfortable with my masculinity. <laughs> <laughs> Where's your book at? Get honest to God. Oh, God. Yeah. Hey, anybody know this? Know what I, how I get down? Shout out to everybody else's preferences. I first time we came on, you remember? Mm-hmm. I came on. I was like, "Where's Charlemagne?" At? I was on some. I was on bumpers because I lost mm-hmm. my my Godfather at the time. I was pissed because you had um made oh, I made me ducky of the fucking day for New Jack City too. Yep, mm. and you thought it was a reboot because everybody was saying it was a reboot, mm-hmm. so you made it donkey mm-hmm. of the day. But I was trying to tell everybody it's not a reboot; it was a sequel. What was the premise? New Jack City Two was basically like years later what happened with the people who were still alive. How about that? Mm-hmm. And I wanted Zendaya in it, and I wanted da- and I, David Washington in it, and you could imagine who those characters would be playing mm-hmm. yeah. the sons or daughters of, and they were supposed to be on some like, you know, uh, what's that movie with uh, Leonardo DiCaprio and Matt Damon and, and all them people where they was like, going at it oh and Jack Nicholson wasn't in as yeah, well yeah, the, yeah. the Departed the Departed it's, it yeah. was supposed to be more like that mm-hmm. you know cause that's what I wanted it to be so it was more like that but like when you gave me Donkey of the Day bro I was so pissed cause I was like it's not even true like it's a it's a <laughs> sequel it's not a reboot it's not I what don't happened. even remember that I do remember now the story <laughs> I remember one of y'all saying Yo, that dude Malcolm Mays was up here hot. I was looking for you. Looking for you. Looking for some gangster shit. Like, looking for you. Because, like, you know, your word really matter. Like, you say shit, people really be taking that, man. But, yeah, my quote got really high after writing that movie. And so now my quote's pretty good. It's not like you take that home and you keep most of it. You split that shit up. Your manager, your artist, yeah. like, your taxes, all that. Like, it don't really, it get chopped down pretty heavy. Mm-hmm. And acting in two different states, I get heavy with the taxes, too. So it, it's not what it looked like. But 
I've been blessed enough to, to put it all together and it looked good. All right. Well, we appreciate you joining. I was okay. surprised you being from Cali that you went with Drake over Kendrick, but you know. I didn't is. say that. Don't you ever did? play with my top like that. Bro. <laughs> I'm about to say that. Oh, I'm wild. Wild. No, I would have. We were talking about the level of success. <laughs> I was with you. Girl, now, <laughs> no, no, I got to go that. home this summer. You got me <laughs> I was ready to say no. And, and by the way, there's only one right answer to that situation. Yeah, the right Some right things are subjective. That ain't one of them. The right answer is this. Aubrey's done great for music. Kendrick is for the people. Culture. Yeah. When the last time Aubrey was standing for Mike Brown and all them people. I love him. Mm -hmm. He does great for us. He all that, but like it's K dot gang gang. Yeah, I, I look nah, but odd riding with Canada. It just don't make no yeah. sense. It's state on wax. Yeah, yeah. Malcolm Mays. West Coast makes the best diss records. It's a fact. Hands no, down, it's, it's not even close. Without the best, best diss records ever of all time come out of the West Coast. Pac, Pac, Pac hit him up. Kendrick. No Vaseline. It's the energy. It's the passion. We really disrespectful. We don't mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. respectfully. We just don't. Mm -hmm. Everybody else is communal. Everybody wants to hang out. Get you don't hang out with nobody. He does push-ups in the park. No. Why are you playing with a man that does push-ups in the park? Leave that <laughs> alone. <laughs> Thank you guys for having me. It's Malcolm Mays. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Jess Hilarious, Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Let's get to Jess with the mess. News is real, weather is just lies. Just for Robin Moore, just don't do no lies. Don't do no lies. She don't spare nobody. Worldwide, just worldwide match. On the Breakfast Club. She's a coach of shit. She was able to get y'all to see something and understand something that nobody could get you to see. It's time to set it off. All right, so Pat McAfee, that's his name, y'all. Yes, I know him. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, he apologized to Caitlin Clark. Um, he went on a passionate rant about Caitlin Clark during his show on Monday, and now he's receiving backlash for it. But I would like the media people that continue to say this rookie class, this rookie class, this rookie class. Nah, just call it for what it is. There's one white bitch for the Indiana Jesus. team Jesus. who is a superstar. And is it because she stayed in Iowa, put an entire state on her back, took a program from nothing to a multiple year success story? Is it because she would go on to break the entire points records in the history of the NCAA? Not just the women's record by Kelsey Plum, shout out, mm -hmm. but also Pistol Pete Maravich's. Okay, so even though it didn't seem like he meaned any harm by it, a lot of people were upset. Uh, he actually was praising Caitlyn after mm -hmm. people pointed out uh, that he called her a white bitch and that was offensive. Uh, Pat issued an apology to Caitlyn personally and on X. He said, um, I shouldn't have used white bitch as a descriptor of Caitlyn Clark, no matter the context. If we're talking about race being a reason for some other stuff happening, I was way... I have way too much respect for her and women to put that into the universe. My intentions when saying it were complimentary, <laughs> a white bitch, <laughs> just like the entire segment. But a lot of folks are saying it certainly wasn't at all. That's 100% on me. And for that, I apologize. I have sent an apology to Caitlyn as well. Everything else are still facts. So we still stand on what he was talking about, but he just took back the white bitch part. <laughs> yeah <laughs> I like you saying and be like black people say we can say things yeah, like, come yo, off, like, yo, that bitch you know, killing like, it that bitch like, killing like, it you know. but that just seen it like yeah, just so it blatant like, white. one white bitch wow. like, like, it, it, it just was, hit me hard like, damn even <laughs> yeah. though he was being positive about it yeah it still was like damn it's still man still. It sound, it, 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 if he was uh it still does sound racist and sexist, even though it came from a white person yeah, yeah it, even it, coming from a white person it still sounds racist and sexist white bitch <laughs> right. <laughs> you sounded crazy. Like, oh my bitch. Gosh. <laughs> uh. Like, no disrespect, but. Right. You know what right. I mean? <laughs> but he was insupportable. No, he really was. But he just, it just sounded passionate crazy. Rant. Um, another basketball news, Angel Reese wants her recognition. So she did an interview with Chicago news station WGN9. And um, she spoke on the attention that basketball, that women's basketball has been receiving and her rivalry with Caitlin Clark. People are talking about women's basketball, but you never would think that we'd be talking about women's basketball. People are pulling up to games. We got celebrities coming to games, sold out arenas, like just because of one single game. And just looking at that, like I'll take that role. I'll take the bad guy role and I'll continue to take that on and be that for, the, for my teammates. And if I want to be that, and I know I'll go down to history, I'll look back in 20 years and be like, yeah, the reason why we watching women's basketball is not just because of one person. It's because of me too. And I want y'all to realize that. Lord have mercy. That little white girl got folks losing it. Yes, you know? I know. I'm mm -hmm. like, well, first of all, y'all do two different things. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, Caitlin Clark is known for what she's a point guard, right? Yep. And then Angel Reese is a center. S slash forward. Yeah. Oh, forward slash okay. Center. Yeah. I mean, 
mean, and while she didn't say that Caitlin Clark does not deserve the recognition of being the face, she also included herself. I think um, she more so wrapped up in comments mm -hmm. and what, like, because that could actually really be, they can be very influential and it can make mm -hmm. you say something. Yeah, you got, you know, celebrities come in and all of that type of stuff. And, and you know, so does she. And then it's a third girl who was drafted too. Like, it's. But the whole, this whole class was really, really good. And yeah, this whole class everybody really, who was yeah. uh, drafted. This whole, this whole rookie class was really, really Cameron, great. Uh, what's her name? Cameron Brinks? Cameron yeah, Brinks. Brinks. Yeah. Listen, Caitlin Clark is a superstar. I don't know what to tell y'all. Right. Andrew Reese is a star. I don't know what to tell y'all. I just want women's basketball to be successful. But I need, you know, both of them to know that the reason people watch the WNBA is for a variety of different reasons. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that there's a lot of people who watch it you know, but for different, for not 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 just because of that one game that they played, correct? Two years ago, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like I watched the WNBA, I watched women's basketball, period, uh, because of Don Staley and Asia Wilson, right? But I started watching women's basketball when Asia Wilson started playing at the University of South Carolina in 2014, and I've been locked in ever since. And I watch the WNBA now, right? Because mm -hmm. of Asia Wilson, I've been watching the WNBA for years because of Asia Wilson. You mm -hmm. see me come here with my Asia Wilson jersey on. Mm -hmm. Asia Wilson is the best player in the WNBA from South Carolina to Met 803. So yeah. I salute Angel and especially Caitlyn for bringing more eyeballs to the NBA. But there is a foundation that was laid way before they got there that they stand, of course. That they stand on. Yeah. Of course. But yeah. but Caitlyn Clark definitely has changed the, the landscape 100%. of the WNBA. You know what I mean? It, she definitely has. 100%. I mean, the fact that they have 18,000 people at one game, yeah. that hasn't happened before. So you can't dis, you know discredit her for that. I'm not discrediting yeah. Angel either. No, but Angel, yeah. No, you but, can't discredit Angel either. But... Them private jets, them chartered planes. Mm. Caitlin Clark. Because of Caitlin Clark. That's right. <laughs> now, if y'all want to go back to Southwest, <laughs> y'all keep, keep it up. Keep talking. <laughs> keep keep it up. Out. Okay. <laughs> By the way, Caitlin and Angel, you need both of them to be successful. Yes. If they are successful, y'all going to stay on them private jets. Mm -hmm. If they're not successful, Back to Southwest, you know. But but I do like the fact that they have that little rivalry. I like that. Like how it's all it was. good. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. As long as yeah, it's all good. The, like the Knicks and the Pistons back yes. in the day. The this and that. Like Listen, you like that I'm rivalry. I'm glad you said that because none of this is hurting. No. The WNBA. Mm -hmm. We're having conversations about the WNBA. Guess what? Just like we have about any other sport. Yes. Right. It's going to be the, just like any other sport. The only thing you shouldn't do is call them bitches. <laughs> <laughs> it's perfectly fine to call the guys bitches, right? Yeah. But don't call any of the women bitches. And I don't. Even, I'm not even upset with the rough play. I'm just mad that Caitlyn Clark teammates ain't help her out. That's what I was upset about. By the way, if she yeah. was a guy, I'd be saying the same thing. Yes. Like yo, where's the yeah, enforcer? Yes. Right? Team. Yes. Yeah. But no, that don't happen with the guys. I don't see that with the guys. What's that? Where somebody. Their team lets the person. Oh hell no! No, nah, nah, nah. I don't see that. Oh, it don't happen with all the women either. Now, let's mm. be yeah, yeah, nah, Camilla Cardoso was an enforcer. Yeah. Let's not act like during that mm -hmm. LSU South Carolina game when Camilla came through, get, put, pushing people down. What's mm -hmm. up? What's popping? Mm -hmm. You know, she's an enforcer too. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. I just like the fact that the W. I like the WNBA and all of these storylines help. We ain't never had this much conversation not about the all. WNBA. Nope. It's about the drama. It is. That's right. Yeah. It's about the drama. Well. That is Jess with the mess. Thank you, Jess. All right, now it's time for the People's Choice Mix again. I got to remind you guys, I announced my car show this morning. August 17th, celebrity calls from your favorite celebrities like Cardi, Offset, 50, Cash Cobain, uh, Bass Wag, French Montana, A Boogie. Uh, of course, we do kids' jumpies, rides, and so much more. Kids 5 and under are free. Early bird tickets are available now. Click the link in my bio, and let's get to the mix. Let's go. The Breakfast Club. Your mornings will never be the same. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Just Hilarious. Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Again, I just want to thank everybody for the support. I announced my car show this morning. It's August 17th in Meadowlands Expo Center. It's indoor and outdoor. We're going to have all types of cars. Uh, American Muscle Exotic, uh, old school cars, bikes, trucks. And we even got celebrity cars from uh, Cardi B. Shout to Cardi. Offset. 50, uh, Cash Cobain, French Montana, A Boogie with the Hoodie, and so much more. There's going to be food trucks, kids entertainment, jumps. We're going to be giving backpacks to kids while supplies last for school. Uh, free haircuts and parking is absolutely positively free. Kids 5 and under are free and is brought to you by Lincoln Tech, Monster Energy, and East Jeep. So shout to everybody that supported me. And we're always looking to put your car in the show. So if you got a car, a bike, or truck you want to put in the show, Email me, djnvcarshow at gmail.com. I appreciate you guys. And you got shows this weekend, right, Jess? Yep, at the City Winery in New York, New York, uh, June 8th and June 9th. So I usually do Friday and Saturday, but this weekend I'm doing Saturday and Sunday since I'm 
right around the corner from here. That's right. I'm going to do shows on Saturday and Sunday. So make sure y'all get y'all tickets at citywinery.com um, forward slash New York City or justelariusofficial.com. Now, it's uh, Pride Month. Yes. And what are we doing today? The honoree is Raven Simone. Today, I'm honoring Miss Raven Simone herself. She is an actress, producer, director, singer, and songwriter. As you know, she was Olivia from the Cosby Show. She starred in Cheetah Girls and had her own show called That's So Raven, which which ended up making a spinoff of it um, called Raven's Home. And today she has a podcast called Best Podcast Ever with her wife, Miranda Madej. And a fun fact about Raven, she performed on Broadway at the age of five and she has been singing since the age of four. The first song by Missy Elliott to be played on the radio was sung by Raven. So mm. we're celebrating Raven Simone. I love you, girl. Salute to Raven. Salute to Raven. Yes. Oh. And Jess does that uh, every day during Pride Month. She honors a gay a day. A gay a day. Yes. Are right. they a day? Gay a day, they a day? No, yeah. no, no. Just it's gay? Just gay. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Positive note when we come back, it's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Jess Larry, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. And I got to remind you guys. Our iHeartRadio Music Festival, we do it each and every September, September 20th and 21st. It'll happen this year at the T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas. Uh, they announced some of the artists already. Big Sean will be in the building. Mm. Doja Cat will be in the building. Camilla Cabello. Did I say that right? Camilla yes, Cabello? Camilla okay. Cabello. Gwen Stefani, uh, Victoria Monet, and so much more. Tickets go on sale this Friday, June 14th at 2 p.m., Last year, who was there last year? I uh, know J. Cole and Dirk was there last year. Oh, that's dope. Well, Dirk, it was Dirk, but he bought J. Cole out. Yep. Mm-hmm. Who else was there? Uh, shit, don't give me the line. That was so long ago. Kelly Clarkson. Uh, Kelly Clarkson. People, you say Kelly Clarkson? Kelly Clarkson. Lord Rick, Dirk, boy. J. Cole, Kelly and Clarkson Kelly did, Clarkson. <laughs> when Kelly Clarkson did think uh, since you've been gone. Yep. Oh, yeah. That's, that's white that white people knuck if you buck. Right yeah, that's yeah. right. I was right. right out there in the mosh pit with Bobby Bones and Amy. We was having a good old time. <laughs> <laughs> having a good old time. But tickets go on sale this Friday, all right? Now, you got a positive note for the people? Oh, uh, I do. But I want to tell people, remind them that tonight I will be in D.C. I'll be in Washington, D.C. Uh, at the Ark, you know, with Mahogany Books. Um, I'm talking about my new book, Get Honest to Die Lying. Uh, it's moderated by Angela Rye. So go get your tickets um, at WhySmallTalkSucks.com Said tickets going fast and the sales will be ending soon. So uh, I don't know how many are left, but uh, I will be there tonight at 7 p.m. at the Arc DC in Washington DC. And then you know later on this week I'll be at um I'll be in uh Arundel Mills. Arundel Mills. Arundel Mills. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Jeff. In Hanover, Maryland. I'll be there uh, <laughs> Saturday at 2 p.m. at Books a Million in Arundel Mills. Is that a mall or something? Yep, Arundel Mills. Okay. It's a county, but it's also a mall as well. All right, so I'll be there 2 p.m. Saturday, Hanover, Maryland, Arundel Mills. I'll be Arundel. There at Arundel Mills. <laughs> I'll be there at 2 p.m. But tonight, I'll be uh, in D.C. at the Ark with Mahogany Books at 7 p.m. with Angela Rye. So I'll see you there. Now, the positive note is simply this. Uh, think before you act. Think twice before you speak. Have a blessed day. Breakfast Club, bitches! Y'all finished or y'all done?